to start going through the folders here, we have the config folder it contains auto load, which will allow you to actually auto load libraries so you don't have to load them in your code. Configuration files, helpers, plugins. It, it's convenient if you're going to use bits of functionality throughout your entire site. For example, you have a configuration file that's specific to the site. Maybe it has an array of of options or something and you want to load it in everywhere you would just use auto load. Config contains much of the basic configuration for Code Igniter including sessions, how, whether sessions are stored into the database or in temp files, how long the sessions last, whether or not they'll be encrypted, etc. The database um, configuration file just simply allows you to configure how the database is connected. Code Igniter doesn't have a really good way to connect to multiple databases and interact between them. So um, that functionality you, you might have to put in yourself, but usually you only need to connect to one database, and when you do that with Code Igniter, it's actually very easy. Um, you can set up multiple D database configurations and change the active group or maybe write some logic that says if the uh, site you're going to is at your dev URL then pull the development database into uh, into the application otherwise use the live site database. Um, hooks allow you to connect into various parts of the process the code Niner process so that you can implement your, cu your own custom code usually you rarely actually need to use hooks. There's almost always a better way to do something, but sometimes it, it comes up. Routes um, is it's a nice bit of functionality. If you want to, for example, if somebody's coming to my website and they're going to, um, you know, website.com/slash um, my podcast, and for some reason you want my podcast to actually go to the podcast um, controller. Uh, using the method view then you can just do that and you can actually basically rewrite the user's experience uh, the the URI strings to whatever you want to in the application so sometimes that's that's re really helpful keeping things uh, well well organized and and keeping your URI strings looking nice um, that's pretty much it for configuration controllers is where you're going to put put your actual controller file. So here's the default controller. What happens is if you go to mywebsite.com it'll go to your default controller. In this case it's welcome. And then it's going to run the index uh, just like it would run index.php or index.html. And in this case it's simply loading the view welcome message. Now welcome message is a file that contains HTML uh, formatted that says, hey, welcome to CodeNighter, and that's pretty much it. I can change this to anything. I can make my own view. If I if I take a make a file called myhtml.php and it's just full of uh, a, an HTML formatted page, I can just type myhtml, put myhtml.php in the views folder, and it would spit it right out to the site. So I go to mywebsite.com, and there's myhtml.php's content. Errors contains your naturally your your error pages. So if you get a 404, it's going to pop up this. You, you can't connect to the database. It's going to pop up this. So um, very convenient to to keep your website looking nice and consistent. Helpers, like in the system folder, uh, allows you to create your own bits of uh, code. That uh, in the application folder is where you would actually create your own helpers. Again, you don't really want to put code in the system folder because that's going to change. When CodeNighter gets upgraded, etc., the system folder is going to change, the structure could change, who knows what, but in your application folder, um, it's it's all the code that's, that needs to run this site. Hooks is, again, the same thing as in the system folder. Language, same thing. Library, same thing. Now, your models is where you're going to put your, your data model code. That's going to interact directly with your database, so you might have a user model, and the user model might contain some methods. Add user, get users, <coughs> update user, delete user. So um, you'll you'll call the co this code from your controller. So in your controller you might have, okay, there's an add user form. The add user form submits. Uh, your controller takes that information. It does form validation. And if everything validates, okay, it's actually going to say, okay, 
I'm going to call the user model and the add user method. If everything went okay, then give them back a message saying your username has been successfully added or, or however you're doing it. Um, but the actual interaction with the database is in the model. You never want to put any kind of interaction with any kind of data source in your controller, in your view. The purpose of, of an MVC framework in the first place is to keep all that code separate so that you can easily have different developers working on different aspects. If you have a designer, um, a, a database engineer, and a just a, a web developer who are all doing separate tasks. But not only that, it's it keeps your code um, much easier to read, much more maintainable, and much more reusable. I might use this the, my my user model on every single website that I make it with minor modifications, but um, it, it's going to interact with my database tables the same way because in websites most of the stuff you do is, is the same stuff but with minor changes. So it really helps. The views folder is where you're going to find. Uh, you know all of your views you can create subfolders so if I have a controller called dashboard and inside the dashboard controller is all the functionality you provide provide to a user on their dashboard you could create a folder under views called uh, dashboard and you don't have to name it the same as your controller I do but it's up to you and then um, you can maybe make dashboard index.php and in here you could write welcome to your dashboard and make it a header, a heading. And um, if you were going to use a variable, let's go ahead and use this welcome message as an example. Now I'm just going to delete the default welcome message HTML. Say welcome to the site, and I want to put your name. And so the way I'd do that is I'd go up to the controller, load up the controller, and I'd send a parameter. It's actually an associative array. And so I do data username equals Sean. And of course, usually you load this in from the database. But we're setting the, the key username to the value Sean and passing it to the view loader. <clears throat> when we actually pull up the view, we can output that using PHP. And is it is the name or username? It's username. So this would output, welcome to the site, Sean. Um, let's see. That's pretty much it for the basics of the Cogniter structure. It's actually a very minimal system, which is one of the things I like the most about it. You can load up the Cogniter base class and read over all of the code that actually runs Cogniter in about 20 minutes. So it's something I definitely encourage. In future screencasts, I'm going to go over more how to use Codeigniter to uh, perform different common tasks. So thanks for watching.